Hey guys, Joe the Mechanic. Today I'm gonna to be doing a tour of my 26 inch Craftsman toolbox. It's a three tier box, uh, one box on the top, one center box, and a roller cart on the bottom. Um, I've been collecting tools for about four years. Uh, I really enjoy working on things and collecting tools. And I've done toolbox tours in the past, but I have gotten some more stuff and I wanna show it to you and I'm gonna do a more in depth tour to show you more of the uh, things that I have instead of just saying this is this and this is that. So let me turn the camera around. The lighting may not be that good because it's just my GoPro with a, a light taped on the bottom here on the handle. But uh, the last tour, you couldn't even, like a, a brand on a wrench, you couldn't even read it or anything like that. So uh, it's going to be better than it was, but there might be a little bit of glare off the back of the toolbox. Um, so I'm sorry about that. But let's get the camera turned around and I'll show you what I got in my toolbox. Alrighty guys, so um, you can see the glare off the toolbox there, but uh, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is show you the outside. Uh, for starters, over here I have my grease gun. I have a blow gun here, which is attached to one of these yellow things here. And then I have another yellow thing, which is just has a fitting on one end, a chuck on one end, and then a fitting on the other for the air compressor. Over here, this is um, expand metal that I used on my welding table, which you'll see later. And um, I just, when I was finished, I used some scraps here to make a phone stand and a stand for my speaker. Also, I got this little skeleton guy here. On the side, I have a thing. It's not for breeze. It's just one of the things. My mom had it empty, and I just filled it with water and soap. Um, for if you have like an air leak, you can or a tire leak, you can spray it on there, and you can see little bubbles coming out of it. And then there's all kinds of other stickers. Uh, First of all, up top, I have all of my Craftsman sockets. Um, I have half inch, 12 point, and uh, half inch, six point deep. And then uh, these are metric, half inch, 12 point. And then the six points are over here. Three inch drive, 12 points, three inch drive, 12 points, six points. And uh, eight point sockets, shallow. I have just about every socket that Craftsman makes, half inch, three eighths, and quarter inch drive, deep and shallow metric and standard uh 12 point and six point and i'll show you the shallow sockets later they're down below i wanted to fit these in a draw but the only draw that they would fit in is the one down here and i didn't like having to go down there to get a deep socket so i kept them up here the eight point sockets didn't fit with the shallow sockets because i have so many so they went up here this is a extra pressure gauge for an uh, air compressor and then uh this is uh, my one of my big pry bars that doesn't fit in the draw and I got some more stickers up there and uh, that's my uncle's business right there he works in North Carolina alrighty so coming in the first draw I have some of these cheapy Harbor Freight brushes here um, the reason I buy them is because they're good for three dollars and I don't have a problem with them in the back I have a aluminum at least yeah it's aluminum uh, speed square and then a stainless steel square for uh, metalworking. Harbor Freight special right here, uh, dial caliper. I'm gonna get a digital one pretty soon, but this one's pretty good. My dad gave me this, and uh, it's actually a pretty nice unit. In the back, I just have a junk measuring tape. I have better ones, but it's just like a spare. This is a clutch puller for a Polaris 550 Sportsman. This goes in the clutch and then you tighten it and the clutch pops off. Um, here is a pressure tester and a compression tester. And then one of these, I forget what these are called, circle drawers, whatever. I don't know, protractor, I think, something like that. Um, this is a draw empty for some more wrenches that I'm gonna get soon. And this is just overflow. This is stuff I rarely come up here. I have these swivel impacts. These are half inch drive. When I get the metric, uh, when I get the standard set, this is the metric set. I'm gonna put it down with my impact sockets, but I didn't want to do that yet because I didn't want to. I have them in foam, as you'll see in a minute, and I didn't want to put it in a way where I couldn't fit the other ones. So I just have them up here on a rail, and then I have lug nut sockets, which are impacts, 
Um, and those are going to go down at the bottom when I make room for the swivels because these are more important than the lug nuts because I already have them on a rail. I got out of my Craftsman set, I have big wrenches up to 24 millimeter, I think. And I'm going to get the jumbo wrench set from Craftsman. These are Craftsman too. These are Craftsman diamond grips and I have a huge set of Craftsman professional here, screwdrivers. And these are my go-to. It's just something that I always use all the time as screwdrivers. So I like having it right by the bench so when I'm working on something, I can use it. And then I have a snap-on, which my dad also gave me, Philip said, which is the go-to screwdriver. And then I have nut drivers, which I use rarely, but I really do enjoy having them for doing like carburetor bolts or something where there's like four and you're not gonna, you can't use an impact wrench and you don't want to use a ratchet, but you want to spin them off fast and they're small. They're good for stuff like that. Coming down here is what all mechanics have, their draw of crap. Over here I have a toothbrush for cleaning things, anything you could possibly clean. A uh, specialty socket, um, some picks and priors and stupid crap that came with a soldering set. You can put your, let me see if the camera can, there's like a notch there you can put your solder wire in it to hold it and then it's got just a straight pick on the other side. A pen. Some butter knives from in the house that um, you just use to scrape things. Uh, my welding tips, these are for my weld mark. I also have my drive roller in there for 30 thousandths wire. I use 35 thousandths wire. This is a spare cone for my welder if I ever wanted to do flux core, which I don't, I use gas. This is a uh, rubber cover for the back of the welder. Um, if When you replace the gas bottle, you don't want to get dust in your hole or the uh, gas port. You put that over it. Here's a cone, gas cone for the welder, and here's a used gas cone. A triangle file here with three different grits, or not grits, but shapes or whatever you want to call it. Uh, big set of feeler gauges. These are, um, I think these are O'Reilly performance tool. They're pretty good. Automatic center punch. A quarter inch nut driver, you just slap a socket on there. It looks like a snap mount and it's actually a Stanley. A, um, another, a separate one of these, I have a air chuck um, over by the air compressor that it's got the like gauge on it and all that. This is like a spare one, it came with one of those sets. And uh, a tire pressure gauge. Over here I have spare stuff for the grease gun, this is like a curved attachment. And then uh, another end there and a straight attachment. And then one of those uh, crappy wrenches they give you when you buy like a tool you gotta assemble. Um, here's some gasket scrapers here. A cheapy adjustable wrench that was $2 at my welding shop so I got it for doing, I, I, I keep it on my welding table, I just I put it in here while I'm, I haven't finished my welding table but when I'm done I'm gonna hang it on there just for taking the gas hose off when you switch the bottle. Staple gun, um, my dad bought a new one and he flips houses and he's got a handful of different ones so he gave me his old one and then I got e-torx in here way in the back that line of sockets and then I have some of these crow's feet only have three I'm going to get more here I have some brake tool wrenches I have a air chuck this has got the rubber end so you don't like damage things with the metal end uh, a light that can go on a hat this is a snap-on separator Right there, this is one of those older ones because you can see the little branding. Where is it? Right there, that's the year mark. I don't know what year it is, I haven't looked. But you put this in like a hole and then you squeeze it together and it can separate things. A huge uh, 10 millimeter Allen key on a T handle because me and my dad ride mountain bikes, so it comes in handy when fixing mountain bikes because a lot of things are 10 millimeter. And uh, this is air tape for the air compressor. Um, these are extractors for getting bolts out of holes. And then this is extractors for getting rounded heads off of, or getting bolts out with rounded heads. This is my socket extension torque wrench and uh, adapter and ratchet draw, which I need to move somewhere else because it's getting out of control. In the back, I have a snap-on speeder in front of that I have a snap-on 3 8 flex head long ratchet you can see it right there and then the speeders laying on it I have a Tecton half inch torque wrench 
a Tecton quarter inch torque wrench and both of those I was pretty skeptical because they're kind of cheap but both of them are excellent this one's good I use this for lug nuts on cars and stuff and the quarter inch we do like uh, valve adjustments and stuff like that in front of that I have a Dorado in front of that I have a Stanley half inch I also have a Stanley 3 8 and a Stanley 3 uh, quarter inch drive ratchet when I first got into tools my aunt bought me a full set with you know one of Stanley's biggest sets and uh, I just took that set apart and put it in my little roller cart that I roll around in but it only had 3 8 and quarter inch drive in that the set that I put in the box so the half inch one I keep in here with my Craftsman half inch that's an old one right there USA another craftsman three quarter inch usa and a quarter inch usa craftsman gear wrench quarter inch roto i really like those roto ratchets from gear wrench the only problem is you can't oil the heads so i mean it's not really that big of a deal but i do like to keep up with my maintenance on my ratchets uh usa quarter inch craftsman um i'm gonna come back to this draw for the impact extensions when i talk about my impact sockets below but i will talk about it here i have a, um, oh, I left that Stanley 10 millimeter on there. I have a 3 8 um, universal, quarter inch universal, and then I have a half inch. The reason the 3 8 and the quarter inch have it is because when they sit like this and you just hold them, they flop over. So I put tape around them so they still have flex to them, but they're not, they don't like flop over so you have a problem with them. Here is just a pile of Craftsman bits. There's Torx, e Torx, Flathead, Phillips Head, Allen Key, Metric and Standard, and Triple Squares. They came out of this big kit and I just throw them in a pile there. There's probably 30. Um, I need to get them separated and organized. Uh, here I have Craftsman extensions, half inch, three eighths and quarter inch drive. You can see them. And a handful of adapters along the ends here. And uh, then I have Pittsburgh, which I don't really like Pittsburgh, but for $7, it's a set of three half inch, three or four three eighths three half inch and three quarter inch drive of these wobble extensions and i wanted to get the snap on wobble plus but for three eighths quarter inch and half inch drive was like they have here was like eight hundred dollars if to get all three sets so you know i have regular extensions so i didn't see the point of getting those when i can get it for seven dollars and i'm probably not going to use them as often i just use regular extensions so it wasn't that big of a deal all right, moving down from here, this is a big update for my toolbox. I finally got impact sockets, and um, I was going to get uh, Clutch, their set, but uh, they were the same, basically the same as Pittsburgh, the same price, the same junk when I looked at them in the store. And um, I think I got a little bit of a better price with Pittsburgh, so I just ended up going with them. And I checked out the Cobalt ones, and if you've ever been in a Cobalt, if you've ever been in Lowe's and you check out Cobalt, um, before you buy them go to Harbor Freight and check out the Harbor Freight ones because um, take a picture of the plastic case they come in it is the exact same it done to every detail on the back of the case where they put the plastic supports in I mean I checked it out just to see what I was getting it's the exact same which probably means it's the exact same junk but I got it for a little bit better price now these here are Pittsburgh professionals now they were renovating my store when I went to buy them and uh, they, I wanted to get all regular ones because they have warranty, so I didn't want to buy the Pro because they're probably the same crap anyway. So if I broke them, I got a warranty anyway, so I didn't want to spend the extra $8 per set to get the Pittsburgh Pro. But they didn't have the regular set while they were renovating, and that's I didn't want to pay that much, so the manager gave me the price of the regulars on the Pros. So, I mean, you can see a little different, like these are more gloss here than these ones. But I got 3 8 and half inch drive, metric and standard deep and shallow and uh, i'm probably not going to get quarter inch drive it's a little overkill i think if you need an impact on quarter inch drive you should just get a ratchet i mean it can't be torqued that much and that brings me up to my impact extensions i figured if i'm going to get their sockets i might as well get their extensions too and i think it was like six dollars for this set and like four dollars for those three it was something outrageous like that so i got those impact extensions and uh they've been great so far i've had them for about three weeks and I can't really say much having them for three weeks, but they've been great. Now these here are my shallow sockets. And uh, I've had these for about, I don't know, three years now, mm, two and a half, three years. And they have been excellent. There's not a single thing wrong with these Craftsman sockets. They have been absolutely, you know, just nothing wrong with them. 
The only problem I do have is that Sears went out of business. Well, they haven't gone out of business. Somebody bought them and something else. And But the one near me left. And uh, going through Lowe's to get a warranty on these things is just, it's awful. So, uh, you know, I haven't even tried going through them, but I, I know what it's going to be like. And the Sears near me shuts in like three weeks, and I went to go warranty something. I don't remember. I think it was a ratchet that had a broken head. Oh, we don't warranty anymore because we're closing soon. So, I don't, you know, but they've been great. I got half-inch drive metric way in the back. Um, I believe up to 36 millimeter, 12 point. And then I have six point standard up to one and a quarter inch, half inch drive. And then my half inch drive, 12 point standard. And then my half inch drive metric six points are here. And then here's some more half inch drive. These are my 12 point standards. Oh, I'm sorry, these are three eighths drive. Sorry about that. These are half inch, these are three eighths. And then more three eighths, three eighths, three eighths. 3 8 and then 3 8 drive, 3 8 drive. And then I got some of these double sockets, which are like 10 millimeter and half inch. They're good for nothing. Uh, quarter inch drive sockets here. Um, for some reason, they only have metric in 6 point and 12 point. In standard, it's just 6 point. I don't get that, but they're going to make a set with 400 sockets, which was the size of this set. I don't understand why they didn't just throw in that many more, but whatever. Coming down from there. I have my plier draw, and um, I got these Tecton mini pliers. They've been great. The only problem is they rust. You know, they're raw. I mean, they're raw metal, but they didn't put any finish or anything on them. And I do live in Florida. There is a lot of humidity, but I do. I have an AC on in here, and it's 72 degrees in here, so I don't. You know, I, I still got humidity, but I don't know. Craftsman Evil. I really like these. The grips on these are great. You know, they're they're a little loose, but. The grips on them are great. These are some old who the hell knows. My dad gave them to me. They don't have a brand on them. They're kind of sticky, but they work. Spare, whatever. Uh, these are Nipex or Nipex or Nipex or whatever you want to call them. Alligator pliers. And these things are just absolutely wonderful. They do everything in the slide on them. Like, I can do it with one hand. Like, you can slide the thing down with one hand and come back. These you gotta like mess around with it, and the, you know, I mean, these are classroom professionals. You gotta take two hands and try to slide the ball over, and you always miss. This one's nice notches, and that groove of how they go together there take off anything. I love them. And uh, here I got some Stanley ones that came in that kit. These are supposed to be my roller cart. These sounds to you, the Stanley ones. Um, these are some craftsman professional bill nose pliers. These are good for electrical work. I really like those. Some Wiss or Weiss or whatever you want to call them, USA. These are tin snips or big cutters or strong cutters, whatever you want to call them. Dykes, side cutters, nips, whatever you want to call these. These are also, which I don't, they say Craftsman. I don't, I've never seen Craftsman with blue grips though. Um, Craftsman Professional, USA made ring clip pliers or C clip, no, yeah, no, these are ring clip pliers. And uh, these are the double-sided ones, so you loosen that nut, flip the thing over, and put it in the other side so you can pull them together, or you can separate them. And then these, we were uh, parked at the sandbar one day on our boat, and uh, these were just laying on the beach. They must have been in somebody's kit. So I brought them home, and I oiled them. These are the smoothest pliers I have, and they're probably just junkers from Harbor Freight. That's what they look like. Uh, here in the back, I have my gear wrench mini screwdriver set and I have used the crap out of these things and I absolutely love them because I do a lot of electrical work and small work with carburetors and stuff so I use them frequently and that ball end on them that fits right also in your palm. fits right in your thumb it's just great you get three Phillips three flat and they are wonderful and I don't think they're that expensive and they're made in USA lifetime warranty uh, here we have my as my dad calls them craftsman gear wrench but these are Craftsman ratcheting wrench, and uh, I have them in metric and standard. The set was like 60 bucks, and I have the red rack here. I got to get the black rack for the other side. I have it ordered, but only one of them came for some reason. Then I have the Craftsman professional set. There's one wrench missing there. It's over on the bench. I was just doing something earlier. And uh, that's just the basic wrenches. I'm going to get some flare nut wrenches pretty soon and some other stuff. Coming down from there, I got oil filter sockets, which I'll take those out in a second. 
Um, I got that in case you get thirsty. I got my impact driver and I'm gonna get the Makita 3H drive impact wrench. Um, it's coming pretty soon, but it's the same exact thing, but it, instead it's got a 3 8 anvil on the end. For now, I've been using these little adapters from Harbor Freight, but I can't stand them because they always fall out. I got my Craftsman half-inch drive impact gun. I have my uh, other half-inch drive gun at one of the houses my dad's working at. We used it for something on his little portable air compressor. I don't remember. I got my little Husky 3 8 a butterfly gun this thing is awesome you can hold it in one hand and do stuff and it's got the swiveling thing so you can point the air hose in whatever direction this thing is amazing this thing here is a another husky air tool and i bought this because of how much i like that one and i've had no complaints with this one too uh this is a die grinder right now i got like a sanding pad in it but it came with a scotch bright um another sanding pad another cleaning pad something like that and uh, this one's a right angle. I'm going to get a straight one pretty soon so I can get some carbide burrs and stuff like that. But other than that, this thing's been great. Then I have my old 3 8 Craftsman Air Ratchet. I think I'm going to get another quarter inch one from Amazon. I don't, maybe an Ingersoll Rand. But this thing is heavy. I, I might also just scrap that all together and get the Milwaukee one. It's quite a bit more expensive, the 12 volt one. But I hear great things about those. Alrighty, so we'll pull this out a little bit here. And these are my oil filter sockets. These things are awesome. I think this set's like 15 bucks. Comes with 10 sizes and an adapter so that you can put it, you put it in the socket there and you can put a half inch drive on it if you want, or you can put a wrench on that. So these are pretty cool. And um, they get everything down to like, I mean, this was the one, I think this was the one for a four wheeler and there's like three sizes smaller than that. So it goes pretty small. And then this one, I mean, that's just out of control huge. So if you got a semi, it might even, have stuff for that but it's just a great set some small ones some big ones and a lot of in between so that's a great set alrighty guys I got on my stool here so I can show you a little bit better um, this is my electrical draw I got my helping hands here and uh, if you're looking into getting some of these I think the ones on Amazon are like 26 bucks this one here is five dollars at Harbor Freight and it works great I don't do much stuff with like circuit boards you know i like making my own crap and fixing a little electrical here i don't like doing circuit boards but when you gotta hold stuff let, excuse me like a circuit board it's good for that i got a solder gun holder here that i don't use much since i got my weller a bin of wire caps i got a kentec harbor freight special straight from china battery charger that i paid 4.99 for so I don't have much faith in it, but I got it as a backup in case I ever need it. This is a heat shrink tubing. This is a, I think like eight bucks for 385 pieces. It's two to one. So it's worked good for me so far. And for that price, I just, I, great. Over here is another one. This is what Harbor Freight's good for. Zip ties and electrical tape. Uh, this is a big assortment, 350, all different colors. You can see I haven't even took the top off of this yet. They're all in the nice rubber bands. It looks really nice. I hate to break into it, but I just got it a few days ago. I will at some point. I got just a Craftsman Evolve hammer. I just came from one of those Craftsman Evolve kits, and I just threw it in here. I, my hammer draw below is full, so. Exacto uh, knife for doing electrical. Electrical tape. I got other rolls in other places. I got one on the cart I'm sitting on. These, I think I do. Yeah, I do. And um, let me show you these things right here. Um, when you're routing cables because uh, for different things, these things are the bomb. These are called Titan Grip. We have, I have two CB radios and uh, I have one on my four-wheeler and main. I have one on my dad's truck and my dad like likes to keep things organized like uh, the cables on his truck. So he stuck one of these pads to the rear window and then you stuck one of these to it and when the cable comes off the roof from the antenna you snap it into this thing which can hold a pretty big size cable and it kind of roots it in a straight line and it was really nice and it comes to this little box and it's got real 3m tape with those nice grips and you can get it in white black and clear this is the black kit over here i got my fluke 101 600 volt cat 3 multimeter um this is a auto auto set or no not auto set auto range 
Um, it can do DC, AC. Obviously, it can do continuity and a few other things that I haven't quite learned yet. That's all I use it for. I really like the auto range. I have the old style. I have one in Maine. I have one somewhere in here in a case or something. I do have one I used to use. But uh, that thing is the bomb. And if I ever need to get another one, I'm getting a fluke. I mean, they're great. This is a... Um, soldering iron that I bought for like four dollars and it kind of annoys me because you can see how thick this cable is and this is a Weller soldering iron that with the station here that cost like fifty dollars and it's supposed to be the best one and you can see the size difference here in the cable from the hold on let me tilt the camera so you can see a little bit better you can see the size difference in the cable from the four dollar one and the fifty dollar one and then here's the station for it and I, I do like this it puts out enough power but it just that annoys me and it's got a variable heat range or whatever you want to call it on and off and uh, the only reason I have this one here is I put the I have a flat tip on this one for soldering this one I have a um, round tip on it for burning basically and the way I cut my socket trays out is I take that thing and I stab it in and then I pull it along and just melt the foam out of the way it gives you a nice clean angle then you come through with the X-Acto knife and clean it up and it looks great. I know you're probably going to say that you shouldn't burn foam, but I haven't had any problems yet. I leave the garage door open, don't worry. Um, I have the Tecton uh, hammer set and these things have been great. I don't know if they're USA made, but and they've kind of beat up. You can see on the edge of there, there's a, lot, there's a chunk missing out of this one. I don't know how that happened. but. Um, I really I use these for everything like I just beat the hell out of them and uh, I think I paid 18 bucks for all three and I would buy them again tomorrow because I've had them for about three years and I'd buy them over and over again I have a what is this an 18 ounce this thing's my go-to this one I like doing with like small work around engines you know, like you want to take a valve cover off you just have to tap it a little break it loose and then this is the big mama this thing's 32 ounces and this thing packs a hard punch without damaging things which is what i like a regular claw hammer um it looks like a snap-on it matches my snap-on green so i kind of like it it is a stanley though and a cobalt i was gonna buy a snap-on one of these but i think it was like 110 dollars so i got the cobalt one and then i do have a snap-on ball peen and um i hate i really do hate to say this but i will not buy another snap-on hammer other than dead blows because, I mean, I do live in Florida, but this is a $60 hammer that rusts. $60 for one hammer. I'm going to buy some Snap-on Dead Blows, but I will not buy another Snap-on Ball Peen or anything like that. If it's going to rust, I might as well spend, you know, 20 bucks for a set of three from Tecton. And a smaller claw hammer, just, I, I don't know. Um, a Williams puller, and uh, it's missing the part that threads in there. And uh, it's missing the top, well, it had top jaws, like um, if you want to flip them over, it had top jaws to pull things out of like a bore, and then it has some, like it has the claws to go around, like around a flywheel, and then it has the ones that like go in stuff to pull it out of a bore, or something like that, but I took those off because one of them was broken. You can see right there, I cut it off, right there, you can see I cut that off. Um, alrighty, so now that we're done there, let me just give you a quick tour of what else we have in here. Um, like I said, there's my stand. I got uh, a, uh, oh my God, air conditioner. And uh, that, that is great in Florida. Today it reached 93 degrees in the winter. Well, the rest of you up north. Um, Craftsman drill press, two-third horsepower. Oh, let me turn, okay, two-third horsepower. This thing's been great. My dad, well, you see, it was my dad's. It still is my dad's, but bought it because it was on sale and used it once and never touched it again I use it frequently because I do a lot of welding and uh, fabricating so I use it frequently and it's very smooth you know it's got the oh that's tight it's got the height adjusting table and it's got the bolt down here you can loosen to tilt the table um, a Harbor Freight belt sander not impressed and if you'd like to know why you can go to my video and what I've said about it there, it's gotten worse since then. So, not impressed with that. Uh, my Craftsman 6-inch variable speed grinding center. Um, I think it came with two grinding wheels. But uh, I don't need two grinding wheels. I just, 
I throw stuff together and fix things. I'm not, you know, out here making money doing it. I, you know, so it's just stuff I like to make myself. So I didn't need all different kinds of grinding wheels, I, but I wanted a wire wheel. So I got one grinding, one wire wheel. And I replaced this with an LED light and it is great. I mean, you can probably barely even see it the way it's coming through the camera. Um, this is variable speed, very smooth. When you crank it up, and that vibration is that's the tray vibrating, but the machine itself is actually quiet. So you can, if you hold it, it'll stop vibrating. And then uh, just some miscellaneous crap GoPro case. Uh, I'll show you my Tecton wrenches in a minute. Uh, this is a shield for welding that I put in front of the camera when I weld, so you can see it. MIG pliers and other crap. Some Dremel bits. And then there's my dad's side. And uh, a welt and vise here that I painted to match my toolbox because the paint was flaking off of it, but I didn't do that good of a job. I didn't actually prime it, so. Cat stool, and then my welding table in process. Don't go nuts in the comments, I, it's in process. Um, biggest mistake I did was make this out of bar stock, but uh, it's okay. I'm gonna put a piece of flat bar stock against here to strengthen out. I'm gonna lift it up at the bottom till it's level, and then I'm gonna put a flat piece there and weld it all the way down. It'll strengthen it up. And then I'll probably run some down the center there on the side. And then I'm using two inch bar stock to the top and I got them ordered and they're just taking a long time to come. Another mistake was buying metal from Lowe's. Very expensive. They messed up the order three times and I'm still waiting for it. But it's coming together pretty good. The weld mark is right there, gas bottles there. Not much I can say about that. And then here's my when they call it a garage glider. This thing is awesome. If you're thinking about these and see it and say, well, why would you have something with draws on that? That's going to be stupid. It's actually excellent. And I, I never even saw these before, but my friend got it for me. And in here I got a quarter inch and three inch drive Stanley. My Stanley sockets out of that kit. Some spark plug sockets. I keep my spark plug sockets in here because that's, you know, it's basic maintenance on things. So I like to keep them in there. Um, gear, uh, Tecton wrenches here, and then there's this salvage store up in Maine where we go for the summer, and they had this for like three dollars. It's a 10 millimeter, most frequent used wrench, so I throw that in there. And then I got some deep well sockets in here from that Stanley set. And I like, you know, you might see me slamming them shut, but I like that because then they stay shut when you roll it around. They don't wobble around. I got a little rechargeable light here, a set of Allen keys, some electrical tape. A, um, my grandma got me this. This thing is cool. Oh shoot, it got stuck again. Give me. Alright. This thing is USA made. I don't know what brand it is. It says right there on G E R O C P A. Oh, that's patent. Uh, USA. And it's a flex head. You push this button in. Ratcheting screwdriver with the bits in the handle. It looks like something you get at Harbor Freight, but it's USA made. It's got a Torx that holds it together. It's actually a really nice tool. She got me this for my birthday. I really like it. I don't know what brand it is and I've been trying to figure it out, but nonetheless, it's a great tool. I keep a wire brush in here, screwdriver, an extension, quarter inch flex head driver, some Harbor Freight picks, 99 cents for four picks. That's fine with me. A 3 8 ratchet there that needs to go to Sears. That's the one I brought and they said they couldn't fix it. It's got a rounded, it's the gears rounded out. I leave it there to hopefully remind me to take it. But that's basically it for my toolbox tour. I just want to say thank you for watching. If you like this video, like it. If you want to comment or ask me any questions about my stuff, go ahead. And if you want to ask any part numbers for any of the tools, I wasn't going to tell you the part number for every tool. But if you want to know what a tool is, you want the part number, leave it in the comments and I'll comment back with the part number. Other than that, I will see you on the next video and maybe soon in the future I can show you this welding table finished. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.